Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for the day you eat of it you shall surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. Okay, that's Genesis 2, 15 through 18. Now, what I pointed out before, which what is so powerful about that, is precious right after the Lord says it is not good for man to be alone. And he says he's going to make him a helper comparable. And the next verse, it says, Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them, or whatever Adam called each living creature that was its name. So you'd think that after God said it's not good for man to be alone, the next thing he'd do would, would be to bring him the woman, right? But that's not what happens. The next thing that happens is he brings him the animals. <laughs> and he gives an identity to all of these animals. And the reason that that happens is, I believe, is for Adam to have that awareness that none of these animals were comparable to him. They weren't compatible. Because remember, he needed a helper, okay? He said, it's not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help me, is what one scripture says. A help me, uh, a compatible helper. So it's said different ways in different texts. But in other words, he needed someone that was compatible to his assignment, right? If all he, all he had to do, this is very powerful. At that time, Adam had been given three things that he needed to do, okay? He only had three assignments. The first thing that God told him to do was to be fruitful and multiply. The second thing was to tend and keep the garden. The third thing was to not eat of the tree of the knowledge and good and evil. He had been given three simple instructions. Okay, He needed a helper that was compatible to him. None of the animals were suitable helpers they were not suitable because they did not give him the opportunity to embrace his glory they couldn't satisfy his need for fellowship for a companion and he could not become one with them he could not reproduce his glory with those animals so again ladies you've got to understand a man is wired to need you God is inbred in a man he needs you we just have to, we have to unlock and activate that impression. You said it so well about him being able to trust you. When that man can trust you, he'll feel comfortable enough to embrace his need for you. Because that need for you is, is built into him. It's wired into him. It's bred into him to need you. But men are afraid to trust that need. They don't want to need you. Now, why is that? Well, think about this, okay? Adam had three things to do. He was supposed to, his wife was supposed to help him. And I know this is kind of hard, and I think this is why the lady said that my show was sexist, because I made this statement and she really didn't like it. I said, man was not put here for woman. Woman was put here for man. That's just the simple truth. Adam lived in a perfect environment. He was in a perfect environment, a perfect world, and perfect, unbroken fellowship with God. Man was not put here for woman. Woman was put here for him, to help him 